Most often, we reserve what we consider to be the most evil acts in society for adults. Members of society who simply grew up to be bad apples that committed some of the most heinous crimes known to man. But some of the worst crimes ever committed were not committed by adults, they were done by children. Rarely ever spoken of, there are some kids that committed crimes so bad, it's going to send a chill up your spine. Well prepare yourself to dive into the mind of the most twisted children that ever lived, because here are the 10 most evil children in history. Number one is Graham Young. Graham Frederick Young was, at only 15 years old, dubbed the serial poisoner in England. Born in Neeston, Northwest London on September 7th, 1947, Young's obsession with poison started long before he was ever caught. He tested a number of poisons on his family and friends, making his father, sister, and even a number of his classmates at school violently ill by putting it in their food food and drinks. His first murder took place on April 26, 1962, on Easter Sunday, when his stepmother died after consuming some tea that Young had added some chemicals to. Young's aunt suspected him right away and the teen was arrested and admitted to the Broodmore Hospital. However, after serving less than nine years in the institution, Graham was released in February of 1971, after which he went on a killing spree, poisoning 70 people people and killing two of them. Young was again arrested on November 21st, 1971 and eventually died of a heart attack, still a prisoner, on August 1st, 1990. Number two is Paul Gingrich, Chase Williams, and Colt Lundy. When a child decides to go down a path of murdering someone, sometimes they need a little help. Indiana high school freshman, 15-year-old Colt Lundy, with the help of two of his friends, shot his 49-year-old stepfather, Philip Danner, four times in the chest, killing him on April 20th, 2010. Lundy's friends and co-conspirators were 12-year-old Chase Williams, who was on the lookout during the murder, and 12-year-old Paul Gingrich, who also shot Danner at Lundy's side. The three boys murdered Danner because they planned to run away and they simply feared that he would catch them and stop them. At only 12 years old, Paul Gingrich was the youngest person to be sentenced as an adult and was given 25 years in jail. Lundy was given 30 years, and Williams, who stayed outside during the killing, was given six years in a juvenile correction facility. The first two boys are still in jail to this day, while the third was recently released. Number three is Edmund Kemper. At only 15 years old, Burbank, California youth Edmund Kemper was arrested after he shot his grandmother and then his grandfather with a 22 caliber rifle, killing them both on August 27, 1960. When asked why he committed the murders, he chillingly replied, I just wanted to see what it felt like to kill grandma. He added that he only killed his grandfather because he knew the old man would be angry over the death of his wife, and the boy wanted to avoid getting in trouble. Kemper was diagnosed as a paranoid schizophrenic and was sent to the criminally insane unit at the state hospital where he served only five years. After convincing his psychiatrist that he was rehabilitated, Kemper was released on December 18, 1969, his 21st birthday. However, instead of becoming a respectful, good member of society, he decided to viciously murder six women, dismembering them and keeping their heads for trophies before then killing both his mother and his friend. After that event, he turned himself in, explaining that the reason for his murder spree was the revenge against his abusive mother that was ultimately completed. Number four, Four is Jesse Pomeroy. Back in the 1800s, a 14-year-old named Jesse Harding Pomeroy became the youngest person convicted of murder in the first degree in the state of Massachusetts history. Between late 1971 and early 1972, several young boys were lured into secluded areas of Charleston and brutally beaten, often left with mangled faces and horrible permanent scars. Then, after moving to South Boston, Jesse continued carrying out these violent actions. But then, in March of 1974, Katie Curran became his first murder victim. Jesse kidnapped the 12-year-old girl and killed her, hiding her remains in an ash heap in his mother's basement. But it did not end there. After a four-year-old's body was found mutilated, Jesse was arrested and Katie's remains were discovered. He was sentenced to life in prison and was nearly hanged before the governor gave him a stay. Jesse Pomeroy died at 
the age of 72, still an imprisoned man on September 29th, 1932 of natural causes. Number five is Michael Hernandez. While some teenagers lose their temper and attack in a rage, Others, like Michael Hernandez, wait patiently for their shot at revenge, making lists and planning their actions carefully. At just 14 years old, Hernandez wrote a list of people that he wanted to brutally murder and began his mission to complete it. On February 3rd, 2004, after luring a 14-year-old classmate named Jamie Go into the boys' washroom at their Miami, Florida middle school, Hernandez proceeded to stab him 42 times and left him to bleed out on the floor while he simply went back to class with an attitude that suggested that nothing was wrong. Fortunately, the teen serial killer wannabe was caught before he could take out a second victim, but the list in his pocket and later his own confession revealed that he had no intention of stopping with Jamie. Disturbingly, the list even contained his own sister's name, who Michael was ready to murder in addition to his friends and other students. He was given a life sentence with 30 years tacked on for attempting to kill another student who luckily refused to enter the bathroom with him. Number six is David Brom. Arguments can escalate quickly and often lead to physical violence. But the thing is, when you're arguing with an evil psychopath, no matter what age, things can get even more out of hand much more quickly. Especially if the person that you're arguing with is anything like David Brom, who, at only 16 years old, single-handedly murdered most of his immediate family with an axe. Around 11.30 p.m. on the night of February 17, 1988, the teen had a bitter argument with his father in their Rochester, Minnesota home. An argument that left David so angry that he decided the next morning to take an axe to his father. Chillingly, according to David, his father kept getting back up, so it took an even larger number of blows to kill him. Immediately after, the teen struck his mother, then walked into his 11-year-old brother's room and killed him. When he came back, he found his 13-year-old sister standing over his injured mother and brutally beat them both to death. Strangely, just hours later, he asked a female friend to skip class with him and confessed all of his crimes to her, after which he turned himself in. Brom was arrested on February 19, 1988 and was sentenced to 53 years in prison. He will remain in prison until 2041. Number seven is Kipland Kinkle. Born on August 30th, 1982, Kipland Kip Kinkle was a troubled boy who was always easily frustrated and anxious when he was in school. He did very poorly in his educational pursuits, repeating the first grade and even was eventually diagnosed with a learning disability. By the eighth grade, Kip was hiding guns in his bedroom, shoplifting, and had even been caught ordering books on how to build bombs. Then, on May 20th, 1998, 15-year-old Kip was arrested and expelled from his school in Springfield, Oregon after a stolen gun was found in his locker. Upon returning home after the interrogation, the teenager pulled a gun from his collection and shot his father Bill in the head soon after shooting his mother multiple times, killing her as well. But it gets even more disturbing as the next morning, Kip brought his entire gun collection to his former school and opened fire in the cafeteria, killing two students and injuring 25 more. Luckily, fellow students managed to subdue him until the authorities arrived and arrested him. When he was questioned, Kim claimed that he heard voices instructing him to kill and that he wanted to die. He is currently serving his 111 year sentence. Number eight is Mary Bell. Born on May 26, 1957 to a 17 year old prostitute in Newcastle, England, Mary Bell was the constant victim of abuse from both her mother and her mother's various clientele. An abuse that she inevitably forwarded onto others smaller than her. On May 25th, 1968, a day before her 11th birthday, Mary strangled Martin Brown, a four-year-old boy in a run-down, neglected house in Scottswood, England. Afterward, both her and a friend named Norma Joyce broke into a local nursery and trashed it. However, unfortunately, the police declared this to be simply a prank and dismissed the evidence. Then, on July 31st, 1968, 
Mary, with Norma's help, strangled a three-year-old boy named Brian Howe in a wasteland near the nursery that they vandalized, with Mary doing unspeakable things to his body. Mary was convicted of manslaughter on December 17, 1968, declared a psychopath, and was locked up for 12 years. However, she was released in 1980 at the age of 23 and was given a brand new identity to avoid the spotlight. This means that she could literally be anybody, anywhere, at any time. Perhaps even your neighbor. Number 9 is Emarjeet Sada. In 2007, at only 8 years old, Emarjeet Sada claimed the terrible title of the youngest serial killer in the world. Born in Begusari, Bihar, India in 1998, Sada's family was very poor and they lived in a small village. In 2006, the young boy murdered his 6 month old sister, taking her from her crib at the local primary school where her mother had left her so that she could run errands. He brutally murdered her and buried her in a shallow grave before casually returning home as if nothing had happened. When he was confronted by people that suspected him of potentially murdering her, Sada freely and proudly confessed to the killing, even personally leading villagers to the grave. He was arrested on May 30th, 2007, but when questioned, simply smiled and asked for cookies. Unbelievably, under Indian law, he was released after serving only three years and is now freely on the street to do what he pleases again. And number 10 is John Venables and Robert Thompson. On February 12, 1993, two-year-old James Bugler was drawn away from the protection of his mother while they were shopping in a New Strand shopping center in Boodle, Liverpool, England. The two who abducted him were two 10-year-old boys named John Venables and Robert Robert Thompson. They hurled stones and bricks at him and even dropped him several times. Believe it or not, those are the only actions that I can comfortably list off from the many relentlessly brutal actions that those two evil teens took while literally torturing their defenseless victim. The ordeal cost the infant his life, and he was so horribly beaten that the actual cause of death could not be determined. The two boys were charged with the murder on February 20th 1993 and caused such a community uproar that their families had to relocate and change their identity. Both John and Robert unbelievably spent just eight years behind bars before eventually being released with their identities also changed. The only thing that remains of their history is their record as the youngest convicted murderers in modern English history. Who they are today is a complete mystery. They could even be someone that you know. So, those were the 10 most evil kids in history. I want to know what you think of these cases in the comments below. Are these the worst cases that you've ever heard of, or do you know of an even more twisted one that should have been on this list? Let me know. Happy Friday the 13th. Remember to subscribe to my channel because I release new videos Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. If you want to watch more, you can press or click either of the two video thumbnails that you see on your screen right now, and don't forget to check out my second vlog channel in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this bonus video and I will see you on Saturday. Sweet dreams.